Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so did I have Woodrow Lucas on the line, and he's founder and CEO of Empowered Recovery Consulting. Woodrow, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Adam. It's great to be here. All right, Woodrow. So uh, I'm really excited to bring this uh, this topic to my audience. So really, we'll talk about your mission to help individuals with um, mental health recovery, what that looks like, the state of mental health in the United States. I mean, we're, we'll dive into this topic, very relevant right now. Um, so excited to talk about that. But as, before we get started, um, we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So Woodrow, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Woodrow, what mission matters to you? Adam, you know, people living happy lives who've had serious challenges, that mission matters to me. People with mental illness have devastating stories to tell. Mental illness, as I talk about in one of my books, is the invisible torment. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that people with mental illness or just people who've had challenges that are traumatic and difficult to overcome know that they can connect to a higher power and they can live out happy lives. So my mission that matters to me is helping people who've had it rough Mm -hmm. to have happy lives. Oh, man, it's a great mission, Woodrow, and uh, it's awesome having you on the show just to spread that love and to spread that awareness. So great stuff here. And maybe just uh, as we get further into the topic, let's just start from the beginning. Like, how did you get on this path to to really helping individuals with um, with mental health opportunities and also um, really just as a business owner? As a, like, how did you get started? Well, I was working at the Brain Injury Association of Tennessee. Mm-hmm as their executive director. And brain injury and mental illness are two different animals, but they have similar characteristics, Mm -hmm. kind of like a wolf and a dog. You know, I mean, they're similar. They're not exactly the same because brain injury can be devastating to the body as well as your mental framework, but they are similar. And when I was working at the Brain Injury Association of Tennessee, It was my first time being in a leadership position where I was really, you know, driving change Mm -hmm. for people's lives. And I said to myself, you know what? I could do this as my own endeavor, you know. Mm And one thing, one deficit that I had as the Brain Injury Association of Tennessee's executive director was that I had to learn a lot about brain injury as I was on the job. I had a lot of on-the-job learning. Mm -hmm. But mental illness, I've been familiar with mental illness for 23 years. And I knew that I knew that animal. Yeah. I knew knew that chihuahua. So I knew that... um, you know, I could create a company that worked with those types of people. And then it just so happened that other types of clients saw the value of connecting to a higher power and started to sign on. But my major thrust is always people who've been diagnosed with mental illness. Mm. What, what a story. And I like, uh, I mean, a lot of businesses start just like this. So, you know, somebody has an idea based on the need they're seeing in the market. In this case, you know, it for yourself, it's to help, um, it's to help clients with mental illness, but the, whatever the, um, the way that people want to add value, like the entrepreneurs, the future business owners out there. Right. Um, but there's a difference here. So you went from, you know, concept, and then you actually did it, like you launched the company. So if you're you're talking to those entrepreneurs out there right now that are maybe a little bit further behind than you, maybe they haven't gotten it all going, they haven't started the company, and they're thinking about it, they have that idea. And maybe they're in an executive position like you were, right? Um, um, What kind of things would you tell them about really just kind of moving forward and, and, and starting that endeavor? I would say three major things to them, Adam. Yeah. 
I would say number one, think about this more than you think about anything else. <laughs> I would say think about this when you're going to sleep. Think about this when you wake up. And, you know, I mean, I believe in God. I don't want to take anything away from God. But yeah. just think about this, this, this initiative of yours all the time if you can, you know, because – that creates a concrete vision in your mind of what it is. Because right now it's just a dream. It starts as a dream. And you want to think about it until practical steps begin to manifest themselves that transform it from a dream to a concrete revenue generating business. Mm -hmm. So my first step would be to think about this business as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Second piece of advice is whenever it comes in your mind to do something practical to forward this business, even if it's as simple as getting a pay a, a PayPal account. Yeah. Even if it's as simple as talking to your first client, mm -hmm. even if it's as simple as putting up a website, whatever it is, do the practical steps as they come to you do them as soon as they come into your mind and the third thing that i would suggest for anyone who wants to take a dream to a concrete business is don't worry about how you're going to market <laughs> just do what you can do because a lot of people get intimidated by the marketing of their company and I was intimidated about marketing and power recovery consulting. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, look, I'm just going to do what I can do. <laughs> I can't do anything more than I can do. I mean, I'm not like, I'm not Dr. Manhattan from the Minutemen. I mean, I, I, I can't <laughs> do anything more than I can do. So just do what I can do and don't worry about it and let it evolve. Let my understanding of how to market this service evolve over time oh man uh woodrow th those are uh, those are great um nuggets of wisdom there and i love that idea of uh of obviously involving involving god like in the conversation just understanding some of these things and and connecting on these ideas and other things like and connecting to the higher powers you mentioned like all these things matter on this entrepreneurial journey so um so great share there um, going a little bit further, I should say, switching it up a little bit into uh, into going further into the topic. So, mental health um, and uh, mental illness. Like, what kind of? So, you're at the Brain Institute, of course. You're working there. You're thinking about you can maybe add some additional value. Like, what was your concept? Like, maybe define a little bit more about the problem and what you were seeing. And I don't mean at the institute. I mean, I just mean in in general in mental health. In mental health, Adam. Whenever you experience a trauma, mm -hmm. you experience a challenge to your self-esteem and to your self-efficacy and to your locus of control. Yeah. All these things are about how you enact your will on the earth. Mm. And when you lose that, when you lose that self-esteem, when you lose that self-efficacy, when you lose that self-control, a lot of folks, they're trying to help you, but they're kind of controlling you, you know? Hmm. They're kind of like, well, do this, do this, try yeah. this, get this done. Well-meaning, right? Well-meaning. Well-meaning, right? yeah, well-meaning. Not trying to yeah. manipulate you, but just well-meaning control because they feel your lack of confidence mm -hmm. So they lack confidence in your ability to run your own life. Hmm. And so I said to myself, how can we combat this tendency for mentally ill people to have other people run their lives? Hmm. How can we combat that? And it just came to me like a light bulb. I said, God is the answer. Yeah. You know, a higher power is the answer. Because if you have a higher power who's unconditionally loving mm -hmm. of everyone and who's also all powerful, that can be someone that you can turn to for support and strength 
that strengthens you to drive your own recovery. Hmm. And that's ultimately what we're trying to get people to do is to drive their own recovery. Because when you're not driving your own recovery, somebody else is driving your recovery and you're not really recovering as much as you could. Yeah. But when you're in the driver's seat of your own recovery, you know exactly what's going on. You know exactly what progress you're making and what better passenger to have than your trusty higher power. Oh, well said, Woodrow. And, and kind of taking it a step further here, I want to maybe talk a little bit more about just mental health in general. So I feel like as a society, I think after, you know, just for context for everybody that's watching this, we're recording this in February of 2022. But, you know, like I feel after the pandemic, all these other things like we've gotten a little bit more sensitive to the idea of mental health because we're all going through it now um, to some degree, I feel like as a collective in the world, Mm -hmm. um, just being human, right? There's a lot of things going on, but like that idea of compassion, and that idea that mental health is a is it's a real thing, like it's a real thing, like it's not made up. Can you talk a little bit more about like the importance of compassion as well and like what that in this situation? Oh, Adam, I'll tell you, one person calling you half an hour a day and encouraging, affirming, and praising your good your good aspects does more for you as a mental health consumer than a year of therapy. Wow. Because that's the power of love and compassion and recovery. When you feel loved, and that's another reason why higher power is so important because you feel loved by that higher power. And so you're like, if nobody else loves me, my higher power loves me. And when you feel loved by those around you, by your family, by your friends, by people, that love is natural, potent empowerment. Hmm. So your question is right on, Adam. Compassion is invaluable. Nothing can happen without it. No, No recovery can happen without love and compassion. It cannot happen. I understand, Woodrow, that you've also um, you've also done a lot of writing on this topic. Um, tell me a little bit more about that. You know, it's so interesting that we just segued about love and compassion because yeah. my book, Birds of Flight, it's a novel about seven mentally ill people mm. who meet a superhuman therapist named Tamika Woods. Hmm. And these seven mentally ill people feel her love and her compassion. And they show each other love and compassion. Hmm. And all seven of them end up getting free of their symptoms and getting well. And the theme of, of Birds of Flight is love conquers all. Wow. Love conquers all. And then in the context of mental illness, love conquers all. And um, I'm very proud of it. It's my best novel. I've written I've written three novels, and it's my best novel by far. And I view it as my best novel because it its message is so needed for lonely hurting people. Yeah, And it makes me feel good that I've written something that can really help and uplift lonely, lonely hurting people. Now, the other, the other thing that I've written recently is Empowered Recovery Consultant and Manual. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of like the left brain to birds of flight's right brain. Empowered Recovery Consultant Manual goes over things like how to choose a higher power, yeah. writing a creed that describes your higher power, how to connect with your higher power, hmm. uh, techniques and skills that you can utilize to keep yourself calm 
and to keep yourself connected to peace when you're going through difficult circumstances. It's kind of a how to be connected to your higher power and recover with your higher power. So it's kind of like the left brain version, like the left brain version of birds of flight, which is like the right brain version. Birds right. of flight. And it makes perfect sense. So basically when you have the two, you're, you're complete there. Cause, cause you need both like the right side to, to spark that creativity, to spark the emotion, to spark the, let's just say to, to make the soil to where you're willing to, you know what I mean? Accept some new ideas and a new way of looking at things. And then you have the left brain that comes up with the actual manual that now we're, we're engaging the technical side of the brain and it's the how to, it's like, okay, this is how you can actually accomplish what you, what you'd like to get done. So between the two, it sounds to me like, correct me if I'm wrong, like you have, you have the complete kit there. Exactly. Adam. And I have all my clients read both books now, it's their word that they read both books. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, did you read both books? <laughs> but And that, but that's have, natural, by the way, because if you're yeah. normally a, a normally uh, uh, tend to be a creative or let's say right side brain person, then maybe the left side, the manual doesn't appeal to you quite as much, even though you need it, right? Or vice versa. Maybe exactly. you're, you, know, you like the manual part. Okay, I just need to check these boxes but you're not emotionally invested into the right side of it, even though we all need that. So now you might be going through it a little bit more rote versus like really pouring yourself into it. Yeah, exactly. Adam. And of course my job as a consultant is compassion, patience. All right. You didn't read either book. Let's keep, let's, let's go. <laughs> Come on, we draw them in. This is awesome. <laughs> so um, I think this is also a great transition. So let's talk about um, empowered recovery consulting. Um, so just and you told us a little bit and told us a little bit about what you do, but let's go further. So tell me a little bit more about your practice. Okay. Uh, pe- people basically either find that about me via word of mouth or my website, www.empoweredrecoveryconsulting.com. Or through different organizations that I'm in, like Alignable or LinkedIn, you know, that kind of thing. And I've gotten, I've gotten clients to providers at certain points, mental health providers who want their clients to have the experience of connecting to a higher power. And they know that I'm good at that. But most of the time, it's just people finding out about what I do via word of mouth. Hmm. Now, once they sign on, I sit them down and I have a battery of questions that I ask them Mm -hmm. to ascertain as to how we're going to go about them choosing their higher power. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of my clients already have a higher power. If they're Muslim, it's Allah. If they're Hindu, it's the pantheon of the Hindu gods. If they're Christian, it's, it's God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, you know, it's like, Whoever I'm working with, they already, a lot of times, already had a higher power in mind. My most exciting clients are those who don't have a higher power in mind. And we're coming up with stuff like air, earth, fire, music. Mm -hmm. You know, this is your higher power. Now, there are two criteria that I use in defining what what a higher power can be. Hmm. Any higher power that a person chooses must be all powerful because without that omnipotence, they can't really do much for them. Hmm. And that higher power must be unconditionally loving of them Hmm. and everyone else. Hmm. That higher power must be love Hmm. or a form of love or 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 a personification of love. And so those are the two criteria that I use in kind of sifting through ideas about who who they want their higher power to be. Hmm. Now, once you pick the higher power, I have them write a creed and I help them write a creed about their higher power that they say five times a day. They say this creed out loud five times a day so that they're in touch with who who. Their imagination has shown them is the person who's going to help them 
get through their recovery journey. Mm -hmm. Then once we've done that, then one, one, once we've created a creed and, and they're saying their creed, then I go over techniques and I go over and I go over skills that they can use in their recovery journey. Yeah. And that's more like a kind of instructional couple sessions that I have with them where I'm just going over the skills, <laughs> teaching them each skill, you know, the meditation, prayer, speaking things into reality, different skills they can use to make their recovery journey easier. And then once we've got all those preliminary steps under control, then we go into counseling mode. Hmm. Then, it's a, then, then, then it's just every session, I'm asking them how they're doing, they're okay. telling me, and we're just, we're, just, we're just exploring their lives and what they can do to better uh, improve their connection with their higher power and how they're relating to others, and most importantly, how they're relating to themselves. Hmm. What do you find, um, like what type of uh, clients do you find get, you know, the most value out of working with you through these processes? And I know you work with a wide range. Um, so again, I know you're not um, working with one religion versus another. So we, we got that part, but like in general, like how, what kind of clients do you feel get a lot of value out of working with you through your process? I find, Adam, that clients who have had experience with mental illness, mm -hmm. maybe not the most severe, you know, but something like anxiety mm -hmm. or depression or maybe even bipolar, but, but not, not necessarily the most severe that you can go, like borderline personality disorder or schizophrenia. So people who have experienced some form of mental illness and are extremely open-minded. Mm. The most open-minded clients of mine do the best. Mm -hmm. Those clients who are like, you know what? <laughs> I don't know much for sure. So I'm open to a lot of different things. I'm open to what you have to say. And also clients who are assertive enough to teach me hmm. clients who have that gift of assertion where they're not afraid to say, Hey, Woody, I, I don't really, I don't, I don't agree with what you're saying at all. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so clients that have had some experience with mental illness, clients who are open-minded and clients who are assertive enough to challenge me do the best in working with me. And it seems like they would too, right? Because they're active participants. They're not passive. They're like getting involved in the in the in the process and they're getting messy, right? Exactly, Adam. Exactly. So, um, Woodrow, I just have to say, it really has been a pleasure having you on the show and just learning more about what you do, your process, type of clients you're working with, um, also your books. I mean, I love that you that you wrote two and one, or you wrote more than two, but the two that we talked about today, one is uh, one is addressing the right side, the other is addressing the left side of the brain. So really, the, the combination of the two do, do um, paint a, a complete picture there. Um, but I have to ask, so so what's next? I mean, what's next for you? Um, what's next for uh, Empowered Recovery Consulting and really just the writing? Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Adam, um, I'm writing a sequel to Birds of Flight right now. Mm. So I'm writing that sequel right now. It's in the works right now in terms of my creative side of things. But I really want to start focusing a little bit of my marketing on providers. Mm. I think the providers need me. I really do. I think they need what I have to offer. And I think they, I think they need me as thin dumb to their practice. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of mental health programs don't train you in spirituality or they don't train you in connecting to a higher power. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of providers need me. So from a creative perspective, I'm doing the sequel to Birds of Flight. Mm -hmm. From a marketing perspective, I'm doing um, focusing on providers a little bit more now because I really think that I can convince them that they do need my help. Yeah. 
And then um, in terms of what I'm doing with the, with the organization as a whole, or with the company as a whole, is that I'm really just focusing on loving my clients mm. to wellness. I mean, that's it. You know, loving my clients to wellness. I just had a client. This woman was a dynamo. I mean, I almost feel like I need to be her client. <laughs> that's, almost how, that's almost how I felt about her. <laughs> but she was so prolific in the work that we did together. Wow. And she made so much progress. And she she worked so hard. One of the things that I stress to my clients is, I want to work myself to obsolescence. Mm. I do not want to be working with you in two years. I do not want to be working with you in two years. I want you connected to a higher power. I want you thriving in your recovery. And I want you doing what you want to do with your life such that you don't need me in any capacity. And that's what I experienced with this client recently Hmm. is we were in a session and I said, Hey, do you think that you really need me anymore? (laughs) And she said, well, I like working with you so much, but no, I think I'm good. Wow. (laughs) And I said, I said that I think I'm I'm getting that same feeling. All right. This will be our last session. (laughs) And that's, that's really where I want to take this company is to a place where I'm not working with people as though they're supposed to be sick their whole lives. Mm -hmm. I'm working with people so they can get on top of their lives and have happy lives and me be a happy memory. Ah, what a story, uh, Woodrow. So uh, and I just think it's, it's a testament to what you're doing. Like, as you mentioned, um, lo- loving your clients to, to, to health and uh, to, to curing the mental illness side of things. I just think it's a, it's a great story. I'm excited that, to see that you're, you'll be writing more. You've got a sequel coming up. And uh, when, when that comes out, you'll have to circle back and let us over at Mission Matters know, because of course, we want to help you get the word out on that. But um, that being said, if somebody's watching this and they want to learn more about working with you um, through your practice, or maybe they want to pick up the books and they want to start diving into the books as well, like how do people connect with you and your brand overall? I think the best way to connect with me and what I'm doing is www.empoweredrecovery.com. Recovery, R-E-C-O-V-E-R-Y. Empower Recovery Consulting, <laughs> C-O-N-S-U-L-T-I-N-G dot com. I think my yeah. website has a link to both books, a link to purchase both books. It's got a link mm-hmm. to purchase both books. It gives you an overview of my background and what I have to offer. And it, it enables you to contact me if you want to set up a schedule or if you want to set up a preliminary meeting. Or if you want to set up a first free session, all my first sessions are free. So the website, I think, is the best hub through which to pursue a a relationship professionally with me. It's awesome, Woodrow. Uh, so, and we'll put, and, and for the audience watching, uh, we'll put all of that, uh, the websites, the links, all of that in the show notes so that you can just click on it and head right on over and check out uh, Woodrow and his work. And uh, if this is your first time watching or listening to the show, um, just to let you know, Mission Matters is a platform that's all about bringing on uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives, and really having them share their mission, like why they do what they do, what kind of value they're adding out there to the marketplace. And really, it's meant to be inspiring, right, to inspire us all to action. Uh, if that's the type of content you're into or like, um, we definitely uh, I- invite you to hit that subscribe button because we have many more um, mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And uh, Woodrow, really, it has been a pleasure getting to know more about you and your journey. So thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much, Adam. <laughs>